Hey y'all and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Jane Corley with PicVisions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. In today's episode we're going to be talking about the clone stamp tool. Everything you need to know to get started off with the clone stamp. I'm going to go in depth as possible but I am going to keep this kind of short because the clone stamp tool is a really great tool and it's actually really easy to work with once you get the hang of it. So let's jump right in. Before we do any edits on this photo, of course, as always, I like to drag down a copy of my background layer. So I have a negative for my background and then a background copy. And I will use this as my live layer and work on this layer so that I have my negative preserved. First things first, clone stamp can be found over here underneath the brush icon. It does have a drop down menu, clone stamp and pattern stamp. So you see over here, the hotkey command is S as in Sierra. Just hit S on your keyboard and you will be able to use the clone stamp. You do have a number of other options up here in the top toolbar, very similar to the brush tool. You can load or manipulate presets, you put them in there. You can change the size of your clone stamp brush mark, the size as well as the hardness. And you can pick awesome patterns to stamp and just use it very similar to a brush tool. We'll leave it on the airbrush tool for the time being. You can also change the mode, change your blending options and your opacity, of course, very similar to the brush tool. You just have the slider or you can just hit your enter or return key and change it in live action with typing it in with your number pad. You also have a flow option and you have multiple layer options that you can sample from. We'll get into that in just a moment. Another thing to note is if you are wanting to make some adjustments with the clone stamp, I would suggest having the clone source over here in your history preset preview panel just to have as many options with your clone stamp as possible. The only one I would really worry about at this point in time would be the flip horizontal or flip vertical icons here. So if you wanted to make a clone stamp from this area over here and you wanted to print the mirror image over here to put it on top of this finger that got into the frame, you could do that with the flip horizontal. Same way as if you wanted to put an upside down turtle beside his turtle, you could do the vertical and do a clone stamp of him right next to him and you would make an upside down turtle. Along with the clone source panel over here, you can also manipulate your brush presets within the clone stamp. So you can change the shape dynamics, you can do the scattering, the texture, the dual brush or dual stamp in this case, and all these other options that we went through in our brush tutorial. If you have any questions about the brush, please refer back to that video. So now that we have all the basics of what you will need to have for the clone stamp tool, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. As you see, my cursor is very small. I can use my bracket tool to the right to make it larger and bracket tool to the left to make it smaller if I wanted to have a larger or smaller clone stamp size or I can come up to my brush window up here and change the size to however large I would like it but even its max is a little aggressive so it it goes up really quick and it goes down really quick when you get larger and smaller so I just prefer to use the bracket key it's a lot easier to manage all right, so how to use the clone stamp tool. Find your alt or option key on a Mac. I am a PC, so it'll be an alt key on the PC. And you can hold down the alt or option key and you get this little target symbol. Yes, it's smaller than your brush icon, but you will get this target symbol. That's identifying this is the center point most of where I'm going to locate my stamp from. So by holding the alt or option key, you're holding it down then click on your mouse or your mouse pad to select that area you wish to stamp from. Now you can make identical stamping in this area over here. We are at 100% opacity, so one click will do it. But as you see, and I'll go to my arrow key real quick, as you see right here, we've kind of told on ourselves, we've got some repeating patterns. That's what you have to really be careful with with the clone stamp tool because you can easily tell on yourself. So let's walk through a little bit of it. Say I want to get rid of this finger. I'm going to hit my Alt or Option key. Let's go back to the S for, S for stamp. Alt or Option key and I will click 
And as you see, as I said, we will keep it with this flipped as I selected in my clone source menu. And I will make one simple click and it's hidden. This keeps the same depth of field. I would suggest if you have the option to zoom in with your clone stamp tool to do so. You can of course do control plus or control minus to zoom in or zoom out. And then you can use your space bar and it will identify the hand tool and you can move across your picture or hitting your alt or option key while moving your rolly wheel will also navigate across the picture. So we're going to get rid of this stick right here, this whole conglomeration, and I'm just going to put some more of this dirt right here over in this area. Alt or option key to identify the stamp location. I'm at 100% opacity. And just paint over. Wherever that stamp mark is made, that's where it will go. Now let's see if we can get rid of this branch up here and just make this a solid tree line. Control plus to zoom in. We'll locate this branch on a little bit more magnification. You can see my brush at this point in time, it might, it's just, just a little too big. So I'm going to use my bracket key. With these mixed tones of green, it's very easy to get those repeating patterns. So just be really careful to continue to sample where you need to sample to get the coverage cleanly that you need. Now you see this little plus mark that comes over in my stamp location. I'm going to take my stamp and then you have a little plus mark that tells you where that stamp is coming from. What portion is exactly being clone stamped into that new location? That helps you identify when you're coming along on these more horizontal lines so that you can really keep the horizontal, keep the planes that you want to keep to just get rid of exactly what you want to get rid of. The clone stamp tool is really great if you're working on maybe personal photos and you want to get rid of a few blemishes on your face. I know we're working on a landscape piece right now but the clone stamp tool is, I use it every single time I jump into post-production. It's very, very handy. Now see, this area over here, it, it doesn't look natural. It doesn't look natural anymore. So if I just wanted to extend this tree line right here, instead of just taking all of that out to get rid of that branch, I can cover up that branch. But if I wanted to maybe just make this tree area here, longer and give it more of an authentic look. Two clicks and we're done. Now it looks like that branch was never there. Those bushes are growing over it. Sometimes just getting rid of it really messy and then fixing it something a little cleaner will will help. We'll get rid of a lot of things and it's easier than going in there and spending too much time on something that you don't need to spend a lot of time on. So what I want to move on to next is lower opacity cloning. You can use lower opacity cloning. Let's take a new clone in this little dirt texture area. We'll hit enter or return and let's say 20% opacity. If I wanted to give a little bit more texture to this area here where the depth of field was a little bit smaller and give it just a little bit more texture. I could even resample from over here and fill it in a little bit here and just give it a little bit more texture. You can do that at a lower opacity. Now say I wanted to add an adjustment layer. I wanted to add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Bump the contrast, let's just say bring the brightness down just a little bit. If I wanted to continue to clone on this background layer because it is just a standard layer not an adjustment layer you can still make the manipulations with the clone stamp tool with those same brightness and contrast adjustments layered on top because the brightness and contrast layer is an adjustment layer laid on top of that image. So anything that you do underneath those images you it, it's affected by the adjustment layer. 
So let's do one last thing. We're going to take this little turtle guy and I'm going to make a dad turtle, if you will. But I want to make him look exactly like him, but bigger and maybe at a different angle. So what I could do is I'm going to take a clone stamp of our little friend here. And then I'm actually going to create a new layer in between the brightness and contrast layer and the background copy layer. I can even shut these layers off. And as you can see, I'm now putting this little guy right here on his own layer. So if I wanted to resize him, I could do Control or Command T and make him bigger. I could hold down my Alt or Option key in the transform and I can transform him around. I can come to do my skews. And I can really just transform him any which way that I want. Because he's now on this different layer and I clone stamped him from this underneath. So now I have him on his very own layer and I can move him anywhere that I want. Hit enter. I can do E for erase and erase portions of him if I wanted to. You know, clip him out like that or something. He's he's on his own layer. He's doing his own thing. So I can just do anything I want to with him, make him bigger or smaller or a different perspective, make him real fat. Whatever I want to do, because he's, he's on his own layer. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy here. So we have a clear background. This clone stamp tool is, like I said, it's really great. You have a bunch of really, really wonderful options. If you want to, like I said, fix blemishes on people's face, faces, uh, modeling pa portraits, or whatever you happen to be working on, a quick clone stamp a couple pixels away and just a quick click will hide that blemish. If you want to eliminate portions of your photo entirely, you know, somebody's got a something weird standing behind them, a flagpole, a phone pole, or something like that, where you don't want it in your portrait, you can quickly get rid of it with a clone stamp. These repeating textures are what's going to get you in trouble with this clone stamp. So with the clone stamp, do make sure to continue to click. Do make sure to continue to sample from different areas. But be very careful of where you'll tell on yourself. I primarily do 90% of my clone stamping when I'm working on restorations just because it's, you gotta have it. Dust and scratches, uh, different things that are on people's faces, on their clothing, in the background, you know, just doing whatever you can do to make that photo look more authentic. But as we can see, this the clone stamp gets really easy to to go overboard with so don't go overboard fix what you need to fix don't fake where you don't need to fake and be very careful about where you clone stamp from how often you clone stamp and the adjustments that you choose to make and make sure to continue to be believable because you don't want your pictures to end up looking like this I hope this video was helpful Please leave any comments or questions in the comment section below, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. I hope we covered everything, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video where we talk about the three best ways to achieve shadows, highlights, and midtones in your post-production process. So tune in next Monday when we talk about that, and if you guys have any other tips or tricks for your fellow post-production artists on how to use a clone stamp tool, different techniques and tricks. I would love to hear them. I love to learn each and every day. Do make sure to like this video if you did learn something new. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and make sure to share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And until next Monday, y'all have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye y'all.